Well, welcome back, family of God. It is good to be back in the sanctuary. Um, as we know, most of our congregation will probably continue to worship from home. We've been in conversation with many of them. So you'll notice that we've got this new addition in the sanctuary, which is this great big surface up here, uh, making sure that we get our worship service recorded and that we can put it out today for all of those who will be worshiping from home. So we greet you, our family that are worshiping through the video today as we greet one another in this sanctuary. We, um, during this service of worship, a few things will be a little bit different. Uh, one is that we are avoiding as much getting up and moving around as possible, and that's simply a virus precaution. The more that we walk around breathing, the more we spread whatever germs we may not know we have um, throughout the building. And so it helps to keep this a safe space, that we keep our masks on. Um, you know, they've been telling us that we can't really have much of anything in the way of music that's not percussion, but we're stretching it a bit because we've got this great big beautiful building and we've got a nice distance between us. So we're allowing a woodwind um, and enjoying the flute and singing. But even our singers remain masked unless they are up here singing and I remain masked unless I'm up here speaking. Um, so we appreciate all that you're doing to keep one another safe so that we can encourage others who might love to come back to worship that this is um, a very low risk environment. Thank you for being here and let us now hear the prelude as we are brought into a spirit of worship.
Thank you, Jess and Eric. As we come to our time of prayer, I want to begin by sharing with you the beautiful prayer poem of St. Francis of Assisi, Canticle to the Sun. Most High, all-powerful good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory, the honor, and all blessing. To you alone, Most High, do they belong, and no man is worthy to mention your name. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord, Brother Son, who brings the day, and you give light through him, and he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars in heaven. You formed them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us, and who <coughs> produces varied fruits and colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, Most High, they shall be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister, bodily death, from whom no person can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin, Blessed are those who will find your most holy will, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord, and give him thanks, and serve him with great humility. Will you join me in our common prayer? Gracious and everlasting Lord, on this day when we gather again in this sacred space, we are aware of sacred spaces throughout all creation. As we listen again to the words of Psalm 19, inspire in us a reverence before the created world, for it speaks your gospel. We gather aware of the many trials being endured by people around the globe, and we lift our prayers for healing and hope for all those families who have lost loved ones due to COVID-19. We pray for those who are currently suffering the effects of the virus, including our President Donald Trump and so many in his administration and the Senate. We ask your guidance, O oh God, as we seek to do a better job of caring for another, loving our neighbors, and protecting the vulnerable. We pray that you will guide us in the paths of wisdom and give us the fortitude to do what is necessary for all. On this day, when we gather inside, we remember how wonderful it was to gather outside and feel the cool breeze and the warm sun. And yet we are grateful to be warm inside this building on this more blustery day. Give us compassion as we consider all those who lack sacred spaces where they can gather with those they love and praise your name. Bind us as your children, your disciples, to one another and all life. Guide us in the paths of Jesus the Christ, for it is in his name we pray all things. Amen.
The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens God has sent a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and runs its course with joy and strength. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. In her popular book, Leaving Church, Barbara Brown Taylor details a transition point in her life when she was leaving behind her career as a parish priest in the Episcopal Church to devote herself full-time to teaching and writing. This change also involved a physical move to the Georgia countryside, and she and her spouse found themselves in search of just the right piece of property. They came upon a beautiful piece of land, blessed with an abundance of oak trees and trillium, an edible landscape that included elderberries, persimmon, and blackberries, and thousands of pollinators were visiting milkweed and sipping from the waters which flowed through a shaded glen. Brown Taylor writes, I found my place on earth. Needless to say, it became their home. She writes, I know of plenty of people who find God most reliably in books, in buildings, and even in other people. I have found God in all of those places too. But the most reliable meeting place for me has always been the creation. I have always known where to go when my own flame was guttering, to lie with my back flat on the fragrant ground is to receive a transfusion of that same power that makes the green blade rise, to remember that I am dirt and to dirt I will return is to be given my life back again. Where other people see acreage, timber, and soil, and river frontage, I see God's body. The Creator does not live apart from creation. When I take a breath, God's Holy Spirit enters me. Perhaps like Barbara Brown Taylor and like me, you have had a similar experience. Maybe it was the ritual of morning watch at church camp, or a striking moment of glory when you are on a camping trip, or a favorite wooded spot to which you frequently return, where you find yourself lost in wonder as your nostrils fill with piney air, and instinctively you close your eyes and breathe in deeply, filling your lungs and bathing them in the purity of sacred space. In all my years in ministry, any time I have asked a small group a question, where outside of our church sanctuary do you feel closest to God? The first person to speak always says, in nature. And it is no wonder that in the popular hymn, In the Garden, the line, I come to the garden alone, is followed by images of divine company, predictably invoked. 
I confess that I go there often while the dew is still on the roses and just as promised, God is my frequent companion there. Yesterday, I googled the phrase garden statue, St. Francis, and was given in literally under half a second more than six million results. From Wayfair.com to Gardener Supply and Walmart and Target, everyone is selling him a testimony of sorts, I suppose, to the saint's enduring popularity and his connection in our collective mind to nature. Though Francis lived 800 years ago and is only one of more than 10,000 human beings who have been canonized as saints in the Catholic Church, he remains among the most popular rivaled only, I expect, by St. Nicholas. On the liturgical calendar of the Roman Catholic Church, today is the Feast of St. Francis. And until this one, surprisingly, no pope in the eight centuries since Francis was canonized has ever chosen the name Francis as his pontifical name. Perhaps this is because that name is so thoroughly associated with poverty humility, radical truth-telling, reformation, and a startling preference for the common beauty of the natural world over the grandeur of human enterprise. And these traits are not exactly what you would expect from someone who is about to reside in a palace and be granted private access to the Sistine Chapel anytime he wants a moment to pray. As many of you have already noted, and so many others, Pope Francis seems to be cut from a different, a rougher cloth than his predecessors. Like his namesake, he has a soft spot for nature, an affinity for the poor, and fearlessness in confronting the rich and powerful of the world. This morning, Pope Francis releases to a waiting worldwide audience his third encyclical entitled Fratelli Tutti, Brothers and Sisters All, drawing inspiration again from his chosen namesake. Pope Francis expounds in this newest global instruction on teachings from the admonitions of Saint Francis, the nature-loving friar. Those admonitions were addressed originally to an in-house audience of all male friars living in community. And thus, the 13th century Francis subtitled the admonitions in Latin, ad omnis fratres, to all the brothers. Today, to all faithful Christ followers of any gender, or faith home for that matter, the 21st century Francis is expected to address Admonition 6, among others. In that admonition, the saints' fellow friars were instructed to see every human being as sheep charged to their care. They were instructed to understand the term brothers all as applying not only to their fellow friars, but even to people of the outside world who most offended them. Let us all, brothers, consider the Good Shepherd said Francis. As Carmen Nenko Fernandez wrote last week in Commonweal magazine, shepherds must share the vulnerabilities, the risks, and the dangers of the flock. She then goes on to quote something that Pope Francis said in an interview shortly after he became Pope. I dream of a church that is a mother and a shepherdess. This encyclical released today, Fratelli Tutti, is expected to bring together several of this Pope's priorities, including greater solidarity with the poor, dialogue with others who have a different worldview, and care for God's creation. In recent audiences, the Pope, had, the Pope has spoken often about the interconnectedness of the health of the planet and the health of all the people who live in it. For weeks, he has preached on the need to use the COVID-19 pandemic 
as an opportunity to reform economic, political, and social structures around the world. As this current crisis has demonstrated, we live in a time of dramatically unequal access to hygienic living conditions, appropriate health care, and economic security. It's imperative that the world work together to keep the marginalized from falling even farther behind because of a global crisis. Wednesday, the Pope said, our world needs to be healed, not only of the present virus, but also of the social ills of inequality, injustice, and exclusion that afflict so many of our brothers and sisters. Yesterday, the Pope held Mass in the crypt where St. Francis' remains are enshrined. And it was a beautiful service, you can catch it on YouTube, of singing and scripture, which climaxed with the Pope presiding at the communion table. Afterward, the translators of the new encyclical brought each of the documents now in the various languages in which they'll be released to be signed by the Pope, readying them for official release. The choice to bring this important signing ceremony away from the grandeur of the Vatican and instead connect it to Assisi on the anniversary of the saint's death is yet another intentional subtext to whatever it is that is written on the pages which the Pope has signed. Both the 13th century and the 21st century Francis constantly point us toward the connection between the cycle of life and death in the natural world and the enduring word of God which guides our life and death together in this our common home. The enduring appeal of St. Francis testified to his cast stone appearance in so many suburban gardens may be attributed to the universal experience identified by Barbara Brown Taylor as finding our place on the earth. Have you found yours? I imagine Jesus, the man of Nazareth, walking under a moonless sky, drinking in the wonder of all those stars above. And the psalmist looking up to the hills at rolling clouds filled with thunder as they approached. I imagine the ancient scribes, eyes half closed, filling their chests with the scent of cedar. And the poets of the wisdom tradition, watching deer gracefully bound across fields as the sweetness of fruit dripped from their chins and they lay in the orchard with a lover. Each of these writers of our holy text found God in earthbound experience. Before there were words, our spiritual forebears understood there was the word, the truth, knowledge, wisdom, instruction, understanding of the divine was before we were. And into the creation, in the beginning, God poured truth, knowledge, wisdom, instruction, understanding. And so the Word of God is embodied in creation, even before it is conceived as language. In his translation of Psalm 19, Eugene Peterson puts it this way, God's glory is on tour through the skies, Godcraft on exhibit across the horizon, Madam Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight lectures each evening. Their words aren't heard, their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. God's word vaults across the skies from sunrise to sunset, melting ice, scorching deserts, warming hearts to faith. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right 
showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. The created world we live in knows God, and it daily proclaims God's sovereignty as much as we are brothers and sisters all with every other human creature, we are also created kinfolk of all creation, the more than human world which St. Francis celebrated in his canticle to the sun. As one commentary put it, on some level, we are all part of the same family. The Hebrew language itself recognizes our family resemblance. The word for humanity is Adam. The word for earth, soil, ground, dirt is Adama. To be grounded in our faith is to recognize our kinship both to God made known in the body of Christ and the cosmic Christ made known in the physical created world. In God's ordering of the world, the future of every creature is linked inextricably to the future of God's creation. In her 1993 book, The Body of God, the theologian Sally McFay brings the truth even closer into focus. In this seminal work of eco-theology, McFay looks at the cosmos itself as the body of God. She said of this work that its purpose is to cause us to see differently, to think and act as if bodies matter, and to change what we value. How might our behavior toward the created world change? If we valued the living world and all of the diverse bodies in it as our true kinfolk, as St. Francis did, I hear in the poetry of Psalm 19 and the admonitions of St. Francis, the theology of Barbara Brown Taylor and Sally McFaig, the fervent prayers of the current Pope, a striking repetition of this same revelation. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The firmament proclaims divine handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the world, their words to the end of the earth. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Amen. Jesus spoke to us through his words to the disciples at that Last Supper, where they shared in his feast at a table. He took the very sustenance that had come from the earth, grain from the field, made into bread, wine, a celebration made from fruit of the vine. And he took those simple elements, that bodily presence of God in the world, and said to them, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And taking the cup after supper, drink of this, all of you. For this is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat and drink, remember me.
Before we are dismissed with the benediction, I want to remind you all that we are in the process of um, electing our new officers. We're a little later in the year than we normally do that, but you should have received an email um, allowing you to send in an email vote um, with the ba ballot. Um, those are due a week from tomorrow. So if you have not received that email, uh, please contact the church office so we can make sure that it is resent or um, sent to the correct address for you. And Deb, is there something more that you would like me to say about that? The three board meeting on uh, October 15th or Thursday. On Thursday, October 15th, we will have a Zoom board meeting. And so we'd like to have the results of that vote before then, which is why we have that Monday deadline. So that Zoom board meeting is also being announced in the weekly updates, um, and we encourage all of you to participate. Go now with the peace of God, knowing that God is with us, sacred spaces surround us, the presence of the holy is right under our feet. Go in joy. Amen.